hello dear students in this lecture we will be discussing the last part of structural changes in chromosomes which is translocation translocation is also called illegitimate crossing over and it involves crossing over between two pairs of non homologous chromosomes so we know that crossing over should take place only between homologous pair chromosome uh, homologous pair of chromosomes crossing over always takes place between non sister chromatids of homologous chromosomes but when crossing over takes place between non homologous chromosomes it is called illegitimate crossing over and this is this process is called translocation so translocation was first of all observed in Enothera, Enothera Lamarckiana by Hugo de Vries and it is also observed in Rohio and Tradescantia. Now when we see what kind of translocation are classified, so translocation uh, is, uh, we can say that it is simple translocation when the translocation is of same size of chromosome segment between non-homologous non -homologous chromosomes. We call reciprocal translocation when translocation uh, happens between non-homologous chromosomes but the exchange segments are unequal in length and there is Robertsonian translocation when uh, it happens with between acrocentric chromosomes so robertsonian translocation when is also called uh, centric fusion of two acrocentric chromosomes and it results in the formation of one large chromosome and one small fragment so we will see this in subsequent slides let us understand translocation with the help of this diagram and this diagram is from uh, the book Griffiths say uh, these are two homologous pair of chromosomes and first pair of homologous chromosomes say we represent with n1 which is yellow in color and say second pair of homologous chromosome we represent with n2 now say crossing over takes place between non homologous chromosome and this is illegitimate crossing over so this illegitimate crossing over is called translocation now after translocation say uh, the recombinants are produced and the first one the first uh, chromosome that we represent with n1 because it has not undergone crossing over so say we represent it with n1 and the second because it has undergone translocation so so this is ex, this has exchanged uh, segment with n2 and so this we represent it this will be a translocated chromosome and say we say this is t1 because this is translocated chromosome and since the second uh, pair of homologous chromosome in second pair of homologous chromosome this chromosome uh, t2 is tra translocated because it has undergone translocation so this is say we represent it with t2 and this is your normal 2 because it has not undergone crossing over so say after this illegitimate crossing over these four uh, chromosomes are n1 which has not undergone crossing over t1 which has undergone crossing over and this is a recombinant now t2 this is a translocated chromosome 2 and n2 which is your normal second chromosome now to enable uh, bivalent formation to enable bivalent formation during a zygotene process these four chromosomes they orient themselves like a plus shaped structure or a cross shaped structure 
so that the homologous part they lie parallel to each other so here you can um, see that in this t1 t1 if we say this is t1 so this homologous this part is homologous with the this part this is homologous with this part and this part of this translocated chromosome is homologous with the normal one so what is your normal one this normal one is your complete normal one which did not undergo translocation now this is the second 2n represents the normal second chromosome which has not undergone any illegitimate crossing over and here this 2, 2t represents your translocated 2 chromosome which has undergone illegitimate crossing over and it has two parts the translocated part that normal its normal part and the translocated part from n1 so this will these four chromosomes n1 t1 t2 and n2 they will lie in such a manner so that the parallel the parallel alleles they lie parallel to each other belonging to different uh, homologous chromosomes or non-homologous chromosomes and so in this uh, uh, position they will orient themselves in a plus shaped manner so we say this is a quadrivalent instead of bivalent a quadrivalent is formed after translocation now we can observe this plus shaped structure during zygotene and uh, then when and metaphase also so after metaphase when these chromosomes they try to separate from each other and go to opposite poles then there are many kinds of orientations and one of the orientation is that these two chromosomes t1 this these adjacent chromosomes go to same pole so this is one orientation that this this these adjacent chromosomes they go to same pole and the other orientation is that this n1 and t1 goes to same pole and here n2 and t2 go to same pole so if we represent it with n2 and this represent we represent with t2 say with this is t1 and n1 so what are the two adjacent orientations in one of the adjacent orientations t1 and n2 go to same pole n1 and t2 go to same pole and in the other orientation t1 and n1 go to same pole and n2 and t2 go to same pole so this is how they have represented in this diagram and the other orientation is that uh, the alternate chromosomes they go to same pole so that one so you can see that t1 and t2 they go to same pole and this n1 and n2 go to same pole so these are the two kinds of orientations which are possible after the whole chromosomes have under now as we have seen in the previous slide that once the translocation has occurred 
in only two chromosomes this is called translocation heterozygote and how the segregation happens in reciprocal translocation heterozygote after this plus shaped structure which is formed at which starts at zygotene and we can see at metaphase what are the kinds of orientations which are possible uh, in uh, uh, after translocation at anaphase we have just discussed that there are in adjacent there are two orientations adjacent one and adjacent two where the uh, um, adjacent chromosomes get go to same pole so like here we can see in adjacent one orientation say on one pole t1 and n2 are going and the on other pole n1 and t2 are going so if we see the number of genes which are going to the same pole so we will see observe that there will be duplication and deletion of uh, genes in this kind of orientation while in alternate orientation when the alternate chromosomes go to same pole like in this example suppose t1 and t2 are going to same pole and n1 and n2 are going to same pole so there will be uh, they will be complete and viable there will be so this is another diagram to show translocation where we can see that n1 represents normal 1 and n2 represents normal 2 which are non homologous to each other and here t1 represents translocated part and t2 represents translocated part so this is forming a plus shaped structure and here in this diagram you can see that the genes are lying parallel to each other in um, in homologous chromosomes so here you can see that the blue chromosome is one to three genes and so when it is making a plus shaped structure you can see that three is lying to parallel to three two is lying parallel to two that is why they are making a quadrivalent so that the um, alleles they lie parallel to each other even after translocation so this picture is from pk gupta please refer pk gupta for this now in this the non homologous chromosomes here uh, they are shown by uh, gene numbers also so if you see the first pair of homologous chromosomes has gene number 1 2 3 4 5 6 and the second pair of homologous chromosomes have 7 8 9 uh, 10 11 12 but these two are non homologous so they have shown it with dashed chromosome and undashed chromosome the, the this is a translocation heterozygote because uh, out of uh, two chromosomes in each pair only one of them has undergone translocation like the lower ones are translocated chromosomes and the upper ones are untranslocated so the second diagram shows a plus shaped structure how it is formed during zygotene in packetine to enable bivalent formation and instead of bivalent a tetravalent is formed so you can see a plus shape structure or a tetravalent in second diagram then the third diagram shows three orientations alternate orientation in alternate orientation the alternate chrom chromosomes are going to same pole and we find a eight uh, shaped structure if there are there are eight chiasma or crossover forms between uh, these chromosomes then the second orientation is adjacent one where the edges uh, two adjacent chromosomes are going to same pole so in adjacent one non homologous centromere goes to same pole and the third orientation is adjacent to adjacent two orientation here also the adjacent chromosomes go to same pole but the other adjacent chromosomes so we find that a ring shaped structure is found during metaphase and anaphase stage uh, and this happens because of four chiasma formation four chiasma are formed and when the chromosomes try to separate from each other and go to opposite pole so we have discussed that out of these three orientations the viable gametes or the functional gametes are formed only in alternate orientation and in other two the adjacent one and adjacent two orientation the non-functional or non-viable gametes are formed because of duplication and deletion of genes so we find a plus shaped structure and a ring shaped structure after translocation in a translocation so this is the whole process of translocation starting from translocation 
heterozygote to plus shift structure and ring shift structure. This we will discuss in part 2 of this lecture. And this is which we discussed in class. So we will, I will discuss, make uh, the second part of this lecture and discuss more. Thank you students.